Christian County, the Colonels. It seems like about once every four videos, I've got another one of those Christian County guys on my channel because there's so many of them. Our guest here today is proud to wear that red, white, and blue of the Colonels. I think yeah. you guys call it county. You guys county. dropped off the word Christian. You just call it county down that way. So, sir, That's right. if you would, tell us who you are. My name is Arvell Banks, um, class of 1989, Christian County High School, uh, state champion, 140 pounds. Um, the work that Alex is doing is phenomenal, man. I, I've watched several videos that you've done, man, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm locked in. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. I, I, I appreciate it, man. I, I really do. And we were talking about um, Christian County. Hop you can't, I hate to say it, but you can't say Christian County with the Hopkinsville. Oh, we're yeah. going to talk a oh, little yeah. bit about this, but I've been down to Christian County, uh, down to Hoptown, I don't know, I think five times doing this, and every time the, the everybody has been just so hospitable. Livingston, D, all those guys, Coach Burnham, everybody has been yeah. real just, you know, never had an issue. Every time we've went down, um, it's just been like clockwork. You know, we've had That's Miguel awesome. on, Willie, that's, you know, come in. We've had several. Sean Smith, Great uh, Green and Grady's online. I mean, we go on and on, and I don't name names. We'll leave somebody off. But thing about going down there is there's so many between Christian County and Hopkinsville, it feels like it's a never-ending story. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, man. Hey, it was so, some battles back in the day, man. It was man, some epic battles back then. Um, I didn't write it down on your bracket, but one of the things that I take a lot of pride in is – like the history that we're able to bring out, the um, the brackets, all that. And we know we in the videos, if you've been paying attention, but we like to go over history anyway, is 1985, Christian County wins the team, or Hopkinsville, I'm sorry, 85, Hoptown wins it. 86, Hoptown wins it again. 88, Christian County wins it. And I think there was a couple years where if you guys didn't, when it you were like second place, I think the year you guys won at Hopkinsville was second. So, was there ever any talk of like making a a super team, like you know, so and so, uh, these guys were good, these guys whatever, and you could put like Christian Kane and Hopkinsville on the same team? You guys would oh be some God. of the best teams ever. Oh my goodness, we we we'll have a, a state finals with at least ten out of twelve. <laughs> uh, ain't no question. Ain't, ain't no, um, now. As it is, as of this filming, we're filming this on the 28th of February 2024. We even kind of timestamp it. In the all-time rankings, um, Hopkinsville is in sixth place with the most state champions with 34, and Christian right. County is in 10th place with 26. So I got to ask. I've asked other guys, and I want your opinion. Two-part question here. Well, let's get the first part out of the way. What's in the water down there, man? What makes man, Christian you know what? County Hopkinsville such a great wrestling hotbed back then? Man, our coaches, man, Coach Perrin and Coach Placer, they were they were phenomenal coaches, man. Yeah. I mean, they could have easily coached on the college level. They were they mm -hmm. were that good. And I mean, yeah. I know for uh for us, got started a little late. I didn't start wrestling until I was in the ninth grade. Okay. Some of them Hopkinsville were wrestling in fifth grade and things like that. They started, you know, fifth and sixth grade. So by the time they were in high school, they were like seasoned. You know what I mean? Um, we've got the, of course, the video of 1986, and we've done the video with Gator, um, heavyweight from Hopkinsville. And in that video, after he wins it, he does like a front handspring. And yeah. Willie is in that video. I think Willie's in fifth grade there, and he was wrestling. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean so, they, they started – Early. I wish I could have started that early. Yeah. I wish I could have started that early. It would have been awesome. And but yeah. So that, it, and you, and you, uh, you kind of answered the the question. Uh, the next part of the question is: you said you started about ninth grade. Is that correct? Is that yes? I started okay. as a freshman. Now the uh, so what would that have been? 89, 88, 87, 86. So is the is Hopkinsville and when I've and I talk about going down there. Every time I've been down there, we've had a mixture of Hopkinsville and Christian County guys. We've never just had a straight Hopkinsville, straight Christian County. And every time that we go down there, there's people not even involved with the video. Like, they'll, you know, maybe we've already done them or they wrestled or whatever. 
it feels like a like a family reunion when Christian County Hopkinsville gets together. Is is that the kind of the way it was? Like you guys didn't really have a whole a lot of animosity. If it's, they, it's a it's a small if, town, and um, you know when you're when you're competing against each other, uh, of each other, of course it's you know hmm. they're the other team. It's kind of like they're the enemy, but. As we've gotten older, man, just none but love, man. Nothing but love all the way across the board. You know what I mean? From Jared Trice, Willie Ennels, when I see those guys, man, we chop it up like we were best friends growing up and everything, man. So it's it's great, man. And that that's the way, um, like I said, that's the way it feels. I think every time – I think every time but one I've been down there, I think I'm right about this. I think every time but one people's brought food, they brought drinks. I mean, it's – it's literally been like a big family reunion. And yeah. um uh Jeff um Jeff Merritt, he's I think three three of the five times I've been down there, he brings me a big plate of barbecue. Here you go, eat it. Eat <laughs> yeah. it. Eat it. This is you know, so and so's baked beans, so and so's fried chicken, or so and so's uh, grilled chicken. I'm like, man, yeah. thank you. I, I really, really appreciate it. And the um but like a what so 85. Hopkinsville wins the team title. You'd have been in eighth grade. Is the town buzzing? Is like, is like, okay, yeah. now we can do this at Christian County. Is that is that kind of the gist? Yes, it is, man. I'm gonna tell you, '85. I never forget it when they won it. Uh, Hopkinsville won it, and they won it in basketball that year as well. It was like the town was is was was in a. It's kind of like winning the Super Bowl. You know yeah. what I mean? It was really that nostalgic, and 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 not to mention. The fact that um, we came in second, I think, that year. Christian County came in second. So when I got into the ninth grade, Coach Perrin made a point for me. My cousin Cedric Davis, he came in second in the state that year, 89. And my friend Alvin Byers, he would have won, but he sprung his knee in, oh. the, in the tournament. He was undefeated going in the state, undefeated. But he, he hurt his knee, uh, sprung his knee, and didn't get to uh, win the state. But we were freshmen. He took us to the state tournament. He said, I want to make sure y'all see the atmosphere. Yeah. So when you get there, you're not overwhelmed. So our freshman year, we all, we, we uh, rode on the bus with the team, went to the tournament, saw everything live, saw Marcus Turley win it. It was great. And we got a feel for it. So the next year with sophomores, I didn't realize I was a JV still my sophomore year. Mm -hmm. But when we became juniors, we were ready, man. Like we got the state, it wouldn't. It wasn't one of those. Our eyes are so big, we weren't ready yeah. for the moment. You know what I mean? Because that. Oh yeah. When you go out there, there's twelve mats on the on the floor, and, and everybody's screaming, and you like, oh man, this is. You know, it's not like a regular little tournament. Yeah. State tournament, it's, man. It, it's a buzz in the building, man. And that's, that's when it was absolutely. at Washington High School back then. Yeah, uh, I've got to officiate the. I got to officiate the boys' state tournament in 2020, and I got to officiate the girls. Um, the first girl state tournament this just a few days ago as of this filming. And oh. and you you can't say it enough to people that have have yet to, to go there. You can go watch a wrestling meet, a duel every night of the week, every Saturday. But when you see those KHSA logos up around the gym, you see all the state represented, you know yeah. this yeah. is a big deal. This means <laughs> something. This yes. is not just a regular six minutes. This is <laughs> the state championship. That's all right. 120 yeah. counties, they all know, yeah, you may have a good basketball season, a good football season, but if you're not bringing home that big gold football and back in football on the big trophy, big basketball, big ba whatever sport you play, they know whenever the town sees that big KHSAA logo on it, you know they know that you have done something. The town yes. comes out, the parents come out, grandparents, everybody wants to be a part of it because they know our part of the state done it. Yes. People that That's come insane. before us couldn't get it done or they tried, they had a great team, they just couldn't do it, but they gone it for one year and forever. We can say this was our year, 1988. Okay. Christian County can say it. And there's so many, so many great stories, but the, um, the Christian County Hopkinsville, like I said, feels like a family. And I think they're in the middle of consolidating those two schools. So imagine what that would have been, you know, not just with wrestling, but other sports. I mean, yeah, some of the names that's come through there, your Miguel Merritts. Um, oh, yeah. Your, your Curtis Pulleys, 
your um, I think they said even Hank Pinter was a pretty good football player back in the day. Yeah. Uh, Hopkinsville, we've done him. Livingston, we go on and on with these guys. But you you said you were on the team as a freshman and a sophomore. You were kind of on the, I guess, the JV roster, which lines up perfectly because I couldn't find you on the state tournament bracket. And I thought, am I missing him I, am, when I do my yeah. research? But I did find you in 1988 at 135 pounds yes. um, as a junior. Now, I'm uh -huh. not sure if you if you saw this review video or not, but uh, you run into Dave Barnes. Yep. yep. From Simon Kenton. And, of course, he was uh, tough. Dave, Dave gets you with a fall. But – it's not like you're losing to just a chump. I mean, you're losing to the most outstanding wrestler that year. Yeah. yeah. And he goes on and he becomes an NCAA Division One All American. Exactly. That was good information, man. When you told me, I'm like, okay, I don't feel that bad now. This guy yeah. was really tough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Dave is very, still very active with, um, he helps, or he's assistant coach now at Walton Verona in Northern Kentucky. Very active. Okay. Dave's, I mean, just a, um, Phenomenal wrestling mind. I mean, if you were going to start a program, if you said whatever school, whatever county, we're going to start a program, who should we hire? And I'm not I'm not saying Dave's on the market. I'm just saying the knowledge, the experience, and the way Dave can coach a program, Dave Barnes would be like, hire Dave Barnes. So I'm, I'm not Dave's agent, guys, so don't be reaching out trying to hire him. I'm just saying <laughs> with, with his knowledge, his experience, that's the type of person you want leading your program. So you talked earlier about going to the state tournament, seeing it, and I can, I can tell you from experience getting a referee at twice, sometimes people get out there on the mats at the – you know, we, you guys had it at Atherton. We have it at the horse park, you know, 5,000-seat arena. All, mm -hmm. Crazy. And sometimes the best move a, a person has is the handshake. They forget what they're doing. They don't know how to – I mean, like, wrestling, what? You know, they get blindsided. So getting to see it twice and then placing the first time you're there, you can tell that experience matters. You can tell. Yeah. It, and, it definitely helps. But you contributed to that 88 team winning the state championship. And yes. I've actually got a – you guys will see it, but the photo – of um, the the team there on the backside of Christian County's gym. I got a good photo of it last time I was down there. Like you said, you guys are are looking at it. And I, I love those 80s-style warm-ups. Oh, yeah. I mean, that is just a – I don't even know the word, but just that – not just your alls, but Hopkinsville's, other teams that we have on video. Yeah. Those 80s-style warm-ups need to make a comeback. You know what I mean? Yeah, they, those are just so timeless cool. looking. Yeah, they were cool, man. The, those were, those cool. were cool. The colonels down the leg, the big hooded, yeah. uh, like those windbreaker hooded windbreakers. Those were cool. What is like the what is the mechanism? How do you know you can turn it up, if you will, to be a state champion in '89? What's the secret sauce? What was it? Man, I saw I saw Darren Parker the year before win state. When we won it as a team, Darren Parker won state his senior year at I think it was 152. Darren started the year off at JV. Oh. So we had to challenge every week. We had to challenge for your position. Yeah. If anybody wanted to challenge you for a slot, Coach Perrin on Wednesday, you challenged for that slot. If you lost, you're you're JV. The first week, Darren Parker lost to uh, Keith O'Daniel. So Keith O'Daniel was at one fifty two for the first two weeks of our of that season. Darren started beating him. He went on to win state. I was like, okay, 
And Darren lived right around the corner from me in the same apartment complex in, in Pinaral Apartments. Mm. I was like, okay, if Darren can do it, I can do it. You know what I mean? Really? Not not saying bad about Darren, but he worked his butt off and he won the state championship. So that mm. was my goal to win it. I, I didn't know who I was going to face. And, you know, back then there was no social media. So, you, you know, you couldn't do a whole lot of, you know, yeah. let me check on this guy, see how he did. Or It was none of that. So you, when you get to the state, you just got to be ready. And and that's I did the best I could. Back. And that's what a lot of the you know the youngsters, high school age and down. We didn't used to have one of these in our pocket. We could pull up and just or do Zoom like this, like you said. I mean, if it just didn't come out in the newspaper or somebody yep. was there or something like that, you just didn't know. I mean, you, you really didn't just didn't know. And I know that was a different world or different time back then. I get it, but still. You just didn't know. You did. You really earlier today, and I'll I'll ask you the same question. Um, we done a video with a gentleman, uh, Jody Burke. He from Danville won it in nineteen ninety four, and he said that whenever they done the, I guess um, KHSEA would contact the athletic directors or wrestling coaches and say, "We're doing the random draw on this day. If you want a copy of the brackets." You got to drive to Lexington to get them. Do you remember seeing the brackets before you got to the state tournament? Do you remember anything about that? Not at all. Okay, Not That's, at I all. just was curious because what a, part of this series that I love is being able to like connect the dots on like when things happen, when we started really kind of modern. I don't want to say modernized, but like when um, information kind of become more accessible for wrestlers, coaches, fans, whoever, because the I think Jody was the first person to say, I could be wrong about that, but I think he was the first person to mention that the KHSAA contacted the schools and said, we're doing it. If you want the brackets, come get them. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah. So somewhere between 89 and 94, now we can narrow that time gap down, it happened. So at least we got a, like a five-year window to work from. So we'll be doing some more videos from the 90s. We'll ask guys. I'll, I'll reach out to some coaches that I know that coach okay. Dan, see what they can tell me. But – 89, though, is your year. It was also the year of, um, I think, WrestleMania 5, the Mega Powers, Hulk Hogan and uh, Macho Man Randy Savage. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. You, you, you yeah. guys got to outdo WrestleMania. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. The, when I was doing your bracket, I couldn't believe the way that this fell. You're not going to believe how I got this video your match video of you talk about the universe being a small place. You start off the state tournament in 89 wrestling Brent Courtney from Woodford County. Okay. Brent Courtney is the guy I got your match video from the whole 1989 year. Okay. Yep. Sure. Good did. Stuff. That's um, awesome. His son Harrison was a four time state champion at Woodford County. Wow, that's awesome. Oh, oh six, oh seven, oh eight, and oh nine. So uh, when I saw that, I was like, that can't be right. But sure enough, it is. So imagine that, right? Yeah, who, that's awesome. Who knew all these years later we'd get your video from him? Um, you win that, of course, by fall over Brent. You go to the quarters. You're wrestling Rod Anderson from PRP. That's out of Louisville, Pleasure Ridge Park, out of Louisville. You win that by fall as well. You get to the semis, and you meet Mike Migliaccio from Tate's Creek. He was and tough. Yeah, yeah, he, he was tough. We'll talk about Mike just in a second. Uh, you win a 5-3 to three decision over Mike. He goes on to get third place, but Mike also in 1990, he takes the champ down, man. He knocks Willie out of being a four-timer. Are you serious? He did? Yep. Yep, he beat Willie in 1990. Yep. Hey, I knew. Hey, he was. Hey, that yep. easily could have. Hey, that could have easily been the state championship match. Yep. That could have been a state. That dude, he was. He was strong as a bull. He was tough, man, for real. Yeah, I remember that match. I remember absolutely. that more than I remember the state championship match. And um, you know, uh, of course, Willie, three timer from Hopkinsville. Willie also won in '89. And when I saw that, I was like, well, huh, what about that? 
So uh, we've <laughs> talked to Mike. We're, we're going to do his review video at some point. It's just getting up with him, getting him, get, getting a time lined out. But yeah, he uh, he beat Willie in 1990. Um, sure did. You know what's funny? It's a small word. Now that you mentioned that, when I got out of the military, I moved to Lexington and went to college. At uh, I started off at LCC, then graduated from UK. I was at a I was at a little car wash. I was going to get something to eat, and I stopped by a car wash, and it was a Tate's Creek wrestling they were doing a car wash for fundraiser so i went over there and talked to the coach i said hey man uh do you remember a guy named uh uh i i, I, I think i messed his name up and I'm like, yeah yeah mike whatever and i said man he was tough man i wrestled him in high school and i told him what was he was like oh he was so upset about that match he said yeah. <laughs> he said he was so upset about that match he just knew he had you because he wanted to win i guess he I, of course he wanted to win his junior year as well i uh, guess yeah. But it was a small uh, word. He was like, yeah, he was upset about that match. But that guy was yeah. tough, man. Yeah, Mike. Um, yeah, that and he wrestles really good in that 90 match. So I can only imagine how good. Of course, we don't have the video of your your guys semifinal there, but I can just imagine how good it was, how tough it was. Yeah, that, being a, that was my being best a five match, to three man. decision. Now you get to the state championship match, the finals here, and you're wrestling David McDaniel from Harrison County. Right. You're both seniors. It says his record, I believe, is 26 and 2. And it's got your record coming into the finals at 36 and 3. Is that yes. accurate? That's accurate. Uh I lost three matches all out of the state. All three of them in Tennessee, two of them in Tennessee, and one of them in Indiana. A guy from Indiana, the king of the bluegrass. I got you. So yeah. I got you. And uh, you know, people not familiar with the geography of Christian County. I think just about every single Hopkinsville and Christian County guy we've met with have said that probably 75% of the year back when you guys wrestled, you were in Tennessee, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, just because it's so close to you guys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You guys can go and hit, hit hit the loop, if you will, hit all the states. And it's I guess it's kind of cool to see different competition, see different styles, see how different people yeah. wrestle. And because in the state of Kentucky, man – we're so spread out. We're so vast. There's very few times, even now, that teams will get to see each other maybe no more than once or twice a year, probably. If you've got somebody that you think can compete for a state championship, you'll go to, like, a tournament, King of the Bluegrass, the the um, the Woodford County Tournament, maybe even state duels. But that's really it. I mean, that's that's, it. that's about it. So let's go back to the, to the Mike match real quick. You win that semifinals, a hard fought semifinals. When you win, does it sink in like, oh my gosh, I'm in the state finals? It did. It okay. sunk in. Of course, you got that the rest of that day and night to think about it and get ready for the next day. Yeah. And I'll never forget, man, that 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 match. I felt like I was so drained. I don't know why. I guess I just got so excited. Yeah. And I was anticipating. Getting warmed up, getting I, I was tired, man. Like I and I and I had all day. It was like I wrestled earlier that day. Yeah. It was one match. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So no, it was tough, I, man. <laughs> I can believe it. And while we're on that topic, let's kind of also narrow something down. It was a two-day event. Did you guys have to weigh in both days? Do you remember? I don't think so. I think it was just I think it was just day for one. Yeah. And see that. We've we've kind of narrowed that down to somewhere between 92 to 89. It went from a one day to a two day. So because we, we've heard stories of some uh, 103, some 112s, even some upper weights coming in on that first day, making weight and then being like 30 pounds over what they weighed in at just because, you know, they didn't have to weigh in again. And they knew that. So, you know, yeah. when you're when you're weighing in at 140 on Friday, and your opponent weighs, you know, on the upwards of 165, 170 the next evening, that's a lot of weight. I mean, yeah. that's a lot of weight when it's class like that. So, it man, is. that's a, that's good to know. So, had you wrestled David McDaniel before this? I wrestled him at the takedown. I think I remember wrestling him at the takedown tournament. But, you know, that's just takedowns only yeah. in, in Christian County. You know, we had that at the beginning of the year, and I think I wrestled him then. And, and – Go ahead. And I know I could take him down. I know I could take him down, but I never wrestled him on the mat. I, I got you. And speaking of talking about being a small world, um, 
I got sent some of Willie Ennell's tapes from back, actually his 1989 review video that we done before I got the the better version of the tape. We done his 89 video with the tape I was sent. And on, there was a couple tapes that I got sent and one of them actually, if I would have thought, I would have kept it or filmed or converted all of it. But one of them was the 1988 Christian County Takedown Tournament was on there. So you were oh, probably really? on there. Yeah. I, just, yeah, I, I just didn't know it. So that's good stuff. Yeah. So it's, it's, Willie has the tape. It's in existence. I know because I gave yeah. it to him firsthand. Now, part of this series that I think draws a lot of people in is not just the video, but it's the historical aspect. How many state champions the team has, how, how many team titles, most outstanding, all that kind of stuff. But the big draw, is the video let's be real everybody wants to watch the match video that's the whole driving force behind this series and you were telling me that you have never seen this video no never that seen it is and it's hearing stuff like that is just absolutely phenomenal to me because it makes what we're doing going out finding videos worth it it's yeah. being able to give people, their families. Now, I mean, you know, who, whoever it may be, husband, wife, kids, grandparents, whoever, moms, whoever it is, co-workers, now that we can say, here it is. Yeah, yeah. What do you, That's why what I do said you what you're doing it? is phenomenal, man. What you're doing and, is phenomenal. And this uh, video has the face-off, the match, and the medal ceremony. Okay. So, without further ado, you guys are seeing what I'm seeing, and I believe that little rascal right there in that orange uh, sweat suit running off, that's some little that's guy it. named Willie Ennels. He's a bad boy. <laughs> yep, yep. So, that, that's him running off, and I, I wanted just to throw that little in that way you could see, because Christian County and Hopkinsville this year was well represented. You... Willie, most outstanding wrestler, Jared Trice. Who am I missing? Yes. There's somebody else. Uh, three or four guys from Christian County that year, Hopkinsville, in the finals, man. That's yeah. just just an amazing, amazing accompli or feat for one county to produce that many great wrestlers. But, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the match. Look at that guy. Yeah, man. He's awesome. And one party five with a 31. Now, here we are. We're right out of the gate, man. You're charging forward. What's your uh, go-to take down here, bud? Man, I, I was a double leg guy, man. I used to get in deep and, and, and dunk, you know. And I, I was good with a headlock. I had a pretty good headlock, too. Right there, out of bounds, out of bounds. Go back to the center. My heart's pumping right now. I hadn't saw the video ever. That's awesome, man. It's uh oh. Now, I was going to ask you about I that. Think, he goes I down to the he, mat. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. I think I broke his. I don't know if I broke his nose, but he came in and I and my head hit him mm. in the face. I remember that, and he had to get a mask. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, he right. had to get a mask. Yep, and you can see it right there. He's got it on. So, ooh, I don't know. About oh, he was I done. He right was there. done right there. Oh! <laughs> we're neutral. We're neutral. We're out of bounds. We're neutral. Oh, man. Now, is this your corner right here, or is that uh, – that you can see with the guy standing up. Is that your corner? Uh, or that corner? Yeah, that's my corner. I think it's Coach Parent over there on his knee. Okay. Look how big the crowd is here. I mean, this place Yeah, man, I'm telling you. It, it'll have you going, man. I'm telling you. Here's a little bit of tidbit for, for the youngsters watching. The gym where this is filmed is Atherton High School, 
That's where Jack Harlow went to high school. Oh, okay. That's good stuff. Yep. So right there, you all mm, – people call it a ball and chain, a chancellor, mixer. Just about had that yeah. right there. That was pretty good. So he's moving around, but you're staying – Staying planted there in the center of the mat. Yeah. Nothing yet, nothing yet, nothing yet. Trying to shuck the head by. Like you got like a quarter Nelson going on. Get behind. There, ooh. That was good defense on his part. Yeah. All right, that's the end of the first period. You're down. Were you more of like a like a stand up? Like I'm gonna try to stand up, or were you yeah. like somebody that tried to do? Yeah, I was, a stand, I was a stand up guy. I wouldn't. I didn't do a whole lot of grand beats and things like that. I was trying to stand up and get on my feet. I was pretty good on my feet. So I, this guy I knew I could take him down. That's why I was trying to stand up. Yeah. Uh oh. Caution. If I officiate the match, guys, while we're watching, it's just a habit. No, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Who's the gentleman in the white shirt? Do you know? No, that's his coach. That's his coach oh. right there, dude. Okay. Oh, get up, get up, get up, get up. Get that hand control. Keep spinning, keep spinning. One, we're neutral. There it is, good call, Mr. Official. Yeah. So you're up now, one zero. Okay. Nothing yet, nothing yet. You you went two or three times to that like quarter Nelson. Was that something you just drilled all the time? Yeah, I was trying, yeah, I did. The camera's a little off here. Come on, camera, there we go. Get back over there. Keep spinning, keep spinning. He's put up a heck of a defense against you. I'll give him that. Yeah, yeah, he was he was pretty – like I said, I never wrestled him on the mat. He was pretty good on the mat, man. I. And the thing about – There we go. There, there it is. You get, your, you get your two there. Or no, did he give it? Yeah, he did. He gave it. Okay, so now you're up three nothing. Yeah. Um, the Christian County teams and Hopkinsville teams back then, they had some of the biggest mat made squads in the entire state. Oh yeah, I mat made. They kept us going, man. You could yep. hear them. You could definitely hear them. There's always like posters and stuff up on the wall. We love yeah. our colonels. Yeah, they definitely was a big support for us, man. They were awesome. And he's going to take down now. So you're up 3 nothing going into the set, third period. This is the first time we've got to see you really on top. Were, were you like, well, you kind of let him go there, trying to feel like a head and arm, get a throw. He rolls you. Yeah, that's that's the roll where he, got, he scored on me. Yep, so it's 2-3 to three now. He's trying to get like a head lever. Did, did you feel like, okay, I need to get up or yeah. I'm safe here or walk us through that real quick? Yeah, I was, I was definitely trying to get up. That was my go-to, but he, he rode pretty good. He's a good rider. Mm -hmm. oh. When I was watching this, I was like, man, he done a really good job not giving up near fall points there.
Do you remember hearing the crowd being as loud as what it is? Man, or? I I I don't I don't even know, man. I like I said, my adrenaline was pumping so much, I kind of got tired, and it and it kind of threw me off my game. Yeah, I got too pumped up for it. And that that's a real thing, people. Whether you believe it or yeah. not, you can get too hot for something. I got too pumped up for that, man. All right, so he's doing a cross body ride there, pulling, trying yeah. to pull that arm over, and you can see the definition in your arms with the muscle. So he ain't gonna get that. No, nah, I was I was pretty strong back then. I think that's Coach Parent or Coach Parent over in the corner on the left of our screen, I believe. Okay. You're still up three to two. We're late in the third period. Yeah. And, and I, th I think I was, was final score three to two. I think three to two. Right, hang on a second. The referee calls time for something. It's, it's I'm not saying man. good, but you get a little bit of a breather right here. Yeah, I was Any, I was gassed, man. Yeah. Ah. Some some guys we've talked to, they like kind of getting like there's like an injury timeout or blood time in the match in the finals. Some people are like, I want to get it over with. I don't want no breaks. I want to get this done. Right. But if I'm sucking wind and I can get a few seconds to kind of recoup and get some stuff in my lungs, I'm like, let the, give me as much time as you can here. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so he gets set. You're set. Ready? Yeah, I think it's almost over. He does a really good job of holding you right there. Going out of bounds. Now you just watched Willie win by pin here. Yeah. For this match. Yeah. And I was upset because I remember I threw that headlock and he rolled me. I was mad I didn't block that roll because I, I had him stuck right there, man. And he yeah. scored. That's how he got his two points, man. Keep going, keep going. And you hear the crowd counting it down? Yeah. And that's the end, man. You win by a final score three to two. Man. Ah, that's good stuff, man. 1989, 140-pound state champion. And also, this video has the uh, medal ceremony, so you'll get to see that. That's good stuff. You can hear the Matt Mace cheering for you there. Yeah. Way to go. And that jacket right there, do you still have I that love by it. chance? Oh, I wish I had it, Alex. I wish I had that jacket, man. When I went off to the military, my mom lost so much of my stuff. <laughs> I, I get it. Oh, um, I love that jacket, though. Yeah. And see, the only those, know those. those were only give out two years, 1988 and 1989. Um, we've talked to Cole. so in theory, there's only 26 of them that ever existed. Willie's 1989 burnt, Jared Trice's 88 and 89 jackets burnt, uh, Dave Barnes' jacket got lost. A um, couple other people we've talked to, there's only been one we've been able to find, and that was from 1988. A gentleman named Lawrence Woodford from Woodford or uh, from a uh, Fern Creek heavyweight had his in perfect shape, but not he oh, sent me man. of it. So I'm trying to see if anybody else has the 88 or 89 jackets just to know if they even exist. I wish I had mine. When I went off to the military, man, my mom moved a couple of times and she ended up, I don't think she lost it, man. I I should have took it with me. Too. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I understand, it, man. I get it. So watching this video back for the first time in 35 years, does it play out the way you remember it? It does, man. Uh, it brings back so when you when you start naming names, 
Like I hadn't heard that Miguel out your name in years. And yeah. McDaniel, I hadn't heard it in years, but it brings back memories. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. And you put on a, a really good performance. You didn't. Of course, this is the only video I have of you wrestling. I never got to see you wrestle in person, of course. I was four in 1989. I, I was a youngster okay. then. And it for, for me, and as much as I've been around wrestling the last 18 years, officiating and everything, it looks like you had a – uh, a game plan, if you will. You knew what you were good at, and you didn't go out and try something crazy. You didn't go out and just yeah. forget your basics, forget the fundamentals. You went out, you knew, okay, I'm good at this. I know I can get a stand-up. I know I can do this. And you were able to execute it the way you needed to. And that's what I did, man. Like, like I said, I started in ninth grade. So my first year, you don't really – you learn the basics. Second yeah. year, you get a little bit better. Then my third year, I was on a team, and we went to state, and I started getting a little bit. If I'd had two more years' experience, I could have had more in my arsenal, man. But I, I'll never, I'll never forget my four years of wrestling, man. That was the best four years of sports in my life, uh, hands down, I man. Can understand Even football, baseball, wrestling, and let those four years of wrestling, best four years of sports in my life, man. I uh, I completely understand, man. I, I do. It's um, it was. That's one of the reasons I love doing this series is getting the history out there, letting the world see more of Kentucky wrestling. Cause I've said in so many videos for so long, wrestling was, has been hid. When I say hid, I mean, if you just wasn't in the gym, it didn't get publicized a whole lot in certain parts of the state. Not too many right. students come out, your classmates. It was, it was usually, if you were lucky, some parents, some girlfriends, Every now and yep. then, some of the football team would stop in, be too cool for school. You know, hey, y'all, yeah. see you later, man. What? And they'd roll <laughs> out. And yeah. now, with this series, Kentucky wrestling is the most accessible, the most historically documented wrestling of any wrestling state in the country. Kentucky. Kentucky awesome, High School man. Wrestling is now on this YouTube platform has the most historical documentation and is the easily accessible, easy, easiestly accessible wrestling state of any place in the United States. And I love being a part of it. I love getting to tell stories like yours, getting to tell the, the Hopkinsville, Christian County. Yes, you guys didn't like each other when you wrestled, but you were probably you know spending all night with each other, going out and hanging out after the meets. You know, what are we going tonight, yeah. fellas? What, what, what are we doing? What are we doing? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah. it's uh it's cool that you know we can we can do what we're doing and being able to let gentlemen like yourself see your video all these years later for the first time. And first time. the uh I like to give guys that we meet with the the open floor, you know, anything you'd like to say, add, take away, anybody you want to you know, if you want to tell Miguel Merritt you're up for the challenge anytime, right? No. No, I'm kidding. I, I'm kidding. I, I'm kidding. I but, yeah, man, uh, I, I just want to say, Alex, man, when I first saw your first set of videos with Willie and um, um, uh, with Gator and those guys, yeah. I was looking like, man, this is cool. You know what I mean? Then I started seeing Grady and I. I was just catching every one of them and just looking like, because a lot of those guys, man, like I said, when Miguel married and when they wrestled, I was already going off. I right. really wish I would have went up that road because I was right in Lexington, man. I wish I would have went up that road and went to the state tournament and watched those guys wrestle, man, because watching those videos, it brought back memories. I'm like, man, this is good stuff. Yeah. So what you're doing is phenomenal, man. Keep it up. Keep reaching out to guys, man. I'm finally, I'm glad we finally got to link up because like I said, uh -huh. the times you called, I couldn't make it to Hopkinsville those weekends or whatnot, but uh, this is great, man. You keep this yeah. up, man. I, it's, it's it's phenomenal what you're doing. I love it. I, I mean, I, I appreciate that. I, I really do. The uh, uh, Sean Smith come in, I think, from Arkansas, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Miguel drove up from uh, Georgia where he's at. There's been two or three other gentlemen from the Christian County Hopkinsville teams that have come in just for their videos. And it, yeah. You know, whenever they come in, uh, I'm just like, man, thank you guys, you know, for – and they're like, we want, we want to see our match video, man. This is incredible that you have it. This is 
this is great. Put it on. And like when we're waiting on for somebody to show up, they'll be like, hey, put on uh put on 1995. Let's watch, you know, this match or this match, or let's watch so and so get beat or you know, whatever. And it, it's yeah. cool. Um, did you see Livingston's 1997 when he does the backflip? I did. I did. Yeah. I did. Know, did. That, I don't know where he got the energy to do a back backflip after you won a state championship, but that's good. That's awesome. The, um, the the reaction of his team, that Christian County team, that was genuine. They they did not yeah. see that before. They had no idea it was coming. And their their reaction is true. There's no no stage and it was hundred percent real. And the uh even to this day, there's been some some names that people have said they maybe enjoyed the a bit like watching them actually wrestle. But the the moment that gets talked about the most of all the series so far is is Livingston's backflip. Nothing gets yeah, brought right. up more to me than Livingston's backflip. Like, and if the if the number of people that were actually in the building that have said they were there when it happened, that building had to be twenty five thousand people big because <laughs> it's everybody's like, right. oh man, I was there for that. I was like, yeah, yeah. Well, were you really? I mean, come on, come on. What are we doing? But yeah, it's cool, man, and just um. You know, it's great that we've been able to to do what we've been able to do so far. And so before we go, one last thing I, I started doing with guys. If you could go back and talk to the freshman you, because we know we have a lot of underclassmen that are wrestling, juniors, sophomores, freshmen, middle school, elementary. If you could go back and tell yourself – doesn't have to be one thing. It could be a couple things. It could be one thing if you if there's one thing that really sticks out or multiple things that you wish you knew before you started or what got you better, what would they be? That way you can pass on the knowledge. I wish I'd have did more um wrestling off season. You know, like more freestyle wrestling, things like that. I never did any of that. You know, and I know I know Jared Trice, he's talked about doing it and the other guys. And it showed, man, when they got on the mat, they had an arsenal yeah. of, of of moves and, and counters and everything. It was like, man, damn, where you learn that at? You know, yeah. so he did. I, if I could go back, I would have got into some freestyle wrestling to learn a little bit more, you know, learn more moves and things like that to, you know, add to my toolbox. And I be got a better you. No, that, that's a that's a great, um, great piece of advice that in, in doing this series. You can't always have somebody like um, Kyle Rochelle from Rowell. He's now the head coach at University of Tennessee, Chattanooga, two-time NCAA Division One All-American, University of Wisconsin. You can't always have somebody like Kyle Rochelle come to your house and do a clinic every day. You can't have right. somebody like Arvell Banks come to your house and do a clinic or somebody, whoever it is, Dominic Black, Dave Barnes, come to your house and do yeah. a clinic. But if you can listen to what they're telling you and maybe pick up something from each little each person and say, you know what? I've heard coach say that. Maybe what maybe these guys know what they're talking about. Maybe, maybe they know more than you know what I give them credit for. So if you you know want to jump in, do some off-season wrestling, do it. There's enough yeah. tournaments now across the country and across, I'm sure, within probably a three to five hour drive at, at the at the most you could go do a weekend tournament maybe once or twice yeah. in the summer yeah i definitely wish I, done that. I push wish I done that. yeah push yourself because i mean yeah you might be able to beat the the kids in your region but you know i don't know how it is everywhere else but christian county right there as soon as you walk in their gym on the left they have a big trophy case with all the state champions have their photos up they don't hang yeah put banners up. They don't put up plaques in their trophy case for regional runners up. You got to no. win the big one. And if your goal is to win the big one, you're in it for the wrong reason. You're in, That's you're, right. you're not striving to say, I'm a state champion. I'm a multiple time state champion. Then I don't, then I get, I don't want to say you're doing it for the wrong reason. Cause you, you, everybody has the reason for wrestling, but your goal should be at the end of the season, when your last match, you can stand on top of that number one spot with the big KHSEA medal on your neck, 
That's right. Come back to school and say, put me in that trophy case. There you go. Yes. Yes. That should be your goal. Absolutely. All right, Absolutely. man. Well, I think we've reached a great ending point. We've covered a lot of ground, man. I really appreciate you um, doing the review video. It's great to get another county county guy on the channel. We, we got we got to use the proper vernacular. Got to get another county guy on the channel. <laughs> I think I picked yeah. it up for being around everybody so long. But man, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. We will see you guys, and now we can say, girls, we'll see you guys and girls on the That's map. True. All right, thanks, Alex.